Hi everyone, Sarah Picaro, and I'm going to address a topic today that's kind of fun. Um, not really, but it's what keeps people in narcissistic relationships is this fear that you have put all this work, all this time into that person, into the narcissist, into the relationship, and if you leave, they're going to move on and they're gonna be with someone else and that person is going to get the better or the good version of the narcissist. So this is a mantra that many people have in their mind that keep them in this nightmare that is a narcissistic relationship. So my point of view on a relationship with a narcissist having been in, in two over the last 15 years is if you stay, be prepared to constantly be unsatisfied, frustrated, just degraded, belittled, all these things. Like if you stay, just know that. Know that that is going to be your life. Uh, you're staying for the kids or you're staying for the finances. You're financially dependent on them, whether you're staying because it's a cultural thing or because you don't believe in divorce, whatever it is, be prepared for the fact that that landscape will never change. It's like looking out into the desert and just hoping and crossing your fingers that one day that desert will turn into an ocean. It's not gonna happen. So you will always be devalued, dehumanized, always be frustrated. So if your reason for staying in a narcissistic or toxic and unhealthy relationship is based on this faulty premise that someone else is going to get the better version of them, it's time to wake up. The better version of this person does not exist. What you are getting is that version of that person and that's the same version that people before you got and the same version that people after you will get. The only really reassuring aspect of the narcissistic relationship is their consistency. They are beautifully, wonderfully consistent at belittling you, degrading you, shaming you, gaslighting you, manipulating you. You can be really confident that the way that you are being treated today is the same way that you will be treated next week, next month, next year, even if they get help, even if they have had this epiphany and they've decided to change and go to counseling and get therapy, you know, a desert to desert, it will not change into an ocean. So if they were a narcissist with you, whoever they are with after you, they will be a narcissist with as well. So many people think, well, what if they're better? And, you know, or even if after the relationship's open, you follow them on social media for whatever reason, and you just deserve to be happy, and they look so happy with their new supply. Narcissistic relationships are kept in place by hope and fear. The hope that your partner will change or that the relationship will improve. And in contrast, there's so many fears that keep people in dysfunctional relationships. These are more common than these practical fears. Like the, you know, what am I gonna do about money? I'm not working or like, I only, I don't have a degree and I can only make 20,000 a year. How am I gonna take care of the kids? Or that if you stay, that they'll get better because of the kids. You know that this is not true. But even deeper than this, this includes the hope that they'll change and the fear, your fears, your fear of being alone, of dying alone, of never finding love, never finding someone else, the fear of not being loved because that narcissist has told you, good luck, I'm the best you're ever going to get. And you start to believe this, that fear becomes ingrained in your mind. It becomes that critical voice that's in your head that was there before them, but they have drilled it in even further. So these are the winds and the sails for that fear that someone else is going to get the better version of that narcissist. And you want that to be you because you have put so much work into this person. And many people believe that they have trained their narcissistic partner to be a better person. And if they let that person go, that partner will quickly move on and just magically turn into an empathetic, compassionate, loving, patient, supportive version of themselves for the next person. 
I hope you hear how crazy that sounds, just maybe hearing me say it out loud. Here's the deal. There's some truth to half of this fear. They will move on. They have moved on. Most likely while they were with you. Narcissists view other people as their partners, as conveniences, as supply. And once you are no longer useful, once you put your foot down, once you start to establish a boundary, they move on. Because establishing a boundary makes it very difficult to have all their needs met. Because you have said, look, I'm not putting up with this anymore. So there's this superficial approach to this relationship that means it's really easy for them to simply replace the people partners find someone new and they do that rather quickly it's pretty easy these days you just hop online and start swiping however the second half of that fear is completely unfounded they will move on but they will not change into something new that desert landscape will not become oceanfront property the empathetic, compassionate, loving, patient, supportive version of themselves will not miraculously emerge because it does not exist. It's a bit like saying, you know, even though I don't like it here, if you live in Chicago, you know, I don't want to move out of Chicago because I bet next winter will be really warm. Not going to happen. Narcissistic relationships are kept in place by both hope and fear, and it can be devastating to give this best version of yourself to a narcissist and try for years and try everything possible only to have them find a new partner within weeks of breaking up. And social media accelerates this devastation because you can follow them, you can follow the new supply, you can see how happy they are, you can see how their relationship unfolds in so many ways now. And you stayed as long as you did because you hoped that they would change. And you may not be letting go of your fear or their empathy that somehow this will emerge and everything that you hoped for will finally happen. It won't, ever. I can promise you that. And anyone else who's on here has been through that, I can assure would promise you that as well. The best way is to get out and that relationship obviously safely with a plan in place and then get out and work on healing yourself from within so that it doesn't happen again. The last thing on earth, if you've been in a relationship like this, that you want to do is rinse and repeat. The last thing you want to do is go out there and start swiping yourself. Oh, F that person. I'm going to prove to them, look, someone else wants me. I am lovable. I'm not all those things that they said I was because you will end up attracting the same type of person. So know this. Know that this is run, kept together by hope and fear, and they will not change. The desert will not miraculously become an ocean. I can assure you that. So get out. Work on healing yourself, your subconscious mind, healing from within. What took you to that type of person in the first place? Healing from those past traumas, triggers, and wounds so that you don't rinse and repeat. So I hope this helps you or anyone else that you know of that might be going through this type of experience. And if that's where you are, you're ready to heal from within, you're ready to do the work because you're sick and tired of living this way, please reach out and click on my banner and schedule a strategy call. You can send me a message, all the things. Thank you guys.